welcome to episode 147 of the Craft House Magic Podcast. My name's Ellie and I'm coming to you from Norwich in Norfolk in the UK and today is the 7th of January. So welcome everybody. I hope you've all had a really lovely crafty week since the last time I've spoken to you and I'm here to share all the things that I've been making in the last seven days. So the rundown of today's podcast is going to consist of, first of all, the knitting projects that I've done in the last week, but then I'm going to go into the make nine plans that I'd set for myself for last year in terms of knitting. So this episode, I'm just going to focus on the knitting. I'll probably do the sewing ones in the next episode because it's going to probably be quite a long podcast. <laughs> so I'm going to go through the make nine plans that I've achieved from last year's list and then I've made a new list for this year and I really had fun going through all the things that I'd like to make and making myself lists because I love doing that. <laughs> I feel that not only does it sort of make you look back at things that you favorited before and check that oh do I really need to knit this do I would I like to have it on my sort of top nine list of things to make and sort of really make sure you prioritize your knitting in the things you want to achieve and it doesn't really matter if you don't achieve it I have got two things that I haven't achieved on my list for last year but I'm going to tell you why and what why I've changed my mind on things after I've gone through the make nine for this year, I'm then going to show you some sewing. I have some cross stitch to show you. I also have just one or two confessions. <laughs> because it wouldn't be the Craft House Magic Podcast without some confessions, would it? And these particular confessions that I've got to show you today, I actually ordered on Christmas Day. <laughs> because, of course, you have to order fabric on Christmas Day, don't you? Because there was a sale. Need I say more? <laughs> And then a quick bit of information on my shop update at the end of the podcast. Right, let's get started, shall we? Oh, before I forget, I need to tell you that my social media links are in the description bar down below. And they're basically all Craft House Magic. And I have my own website, crafthousemagic.co.uk, where I sell my hand-dyed yarn, project bags, higher, higher knitting needles, clover crochet hooks, and a bag making supplies as well, including fabrics and wadding. So let's get on with the knitting, shall we? And I am so excited to show you that I finished my Way Through the Woods mittens. So those of you who've been watching a little while, you'll know that I've been knitting these quite a long time. <laughs> and I've possibly knitted about five mittens and undone them. But here they are finished so this is the way through the woods mittens and it's a pattern by erica mount and i love it because there are these little cottages at the top of the mittens and then they have these lovely trees and the wildlife dotted around and there's also some bears on the back as well which is cute with lots of trees i just love the placement of these trees i think they're gorgeous and the addition of the Latvian braid is just absolutely lovely. I just love the way these look. Really adds to the way the mittens look. My colour work isn't the neatest in the world, but I think with a little bit of blocking, those will come out lovely. I have ordered some new blocking mitten blockers. So they should be in the post in the next week or so, hopefully. And I'll be able to block those and show you the difference between sort of blocked and non-blocked. I'm hoping that when these are blocked out, that these, you can see little bits of where the teal's coming through, where I've caught the floats on the back of the work. So I'm hoping that once I've blocked them a bit, that'll disappear, but we shall see. I think my tension still needs a little bit of work, but... I think I'm relatively happy with it and I think that they'll be nice and wearable and very very cosy. So I'm not quite sure whether I said the pattern designer is Erica Mount. So that's the Way Through the Woods pattern by Erica Mount. And these are knitted in some blacker yarns and they're two different yarns actually. So they're both blacker yarns but one is Jacob and one is Shetland but they're both four ply. This teal colour is the Jacob and the creamy white is the Shetland. I originally actually picked up this and another colour, like a pale green to go together. I think it was at Edinburgh Yarn Festival one year. I started knitting it and I just wasn't happy with the way the colours work together. And I'd seen that somebody would used white with a teal or a navy and it just looked gorgeous. So I then went back on the Blackie Yarns website and picked up this white because the contrast just looks like a snow scene, doesn't it, basically? I did kind of like the look of it, but just the impact of the snow scene looked really pretty, I thought. So I'm really pleased I decided to change my mind, even though I've knitted them about five times. 
I shall show you what they look like on. Very, very, very cosy. Love them. Really love these. They're going to be something that I always turn to for sort of going for walks with because they are the cosiest things ever. And who can resist those gorgeous little houses? <laughs> but I'm so chuffed. So that's my first finished object to show you. And I have a shawl, a finished shawl. Yes, I whipped up this week. No. <laughs> Adam's mum has been in need of some knitting to do. So I dropped off some knitting over Christmas. Um, you might have seen me drop it off over on the Vlogmas videos. <laughs> and this is one of the projects that she's been working on. So she's going to hate me because I gave her completely black yarn to work on because obviously... <laughs> If it's a lacy project, black yarn can be an absolute nightmare. But she didn't complain at all and she's done a lovely job of knitting this one up. Now I don't really think that you're going to be able to see the lace detail very well. Because it is black yarn and we all know how hard it is to see things on camera with black yarn. But there's a really nice lacy detail on this shawl. You can just see where the light's coming through through the back there. Really pretty. I wanted it to be relatively plain but just with a little bit of detail on um, and this is the softest softest yarn so I should tell you what the pattern is it is called Pool Drops by Greta Menson I think that's how you say it and I just saw this on Ravelry and thought this is one of the perfect patterns to knit those two skeins of yarn that are in my stash into. So this yarn is the Juniper Moon Farm Harriet Fine and it's a baby alpaca and nylon blend and I've had it in my stash a little while. It's 75% alpaca and 25% polyamide and it's a four ply yarn 420 meters in a skein and I had two skeins of this and after knitting the shawl which I think is lovely. It is such a nice long crescent shaped shawl that will be ideal for wearing both sort of round the back of my shoulders like so if you're dressing it up a little bit. Um, obviously this isn't blocked yet. I'll block it for next week so I can show you properly and I can also wear it like I do with a lot of my shawls like this and obviously I'll arrange it a little bit better rather than doing it on camera <laughs> like that or you could actually sort of swathe it across my shoulders so that I can put a shawl pin on with it sort of have it like this I suppose but spend a little bit more time titivating it a little bit <laughs> you could sort of wear it like that with a shawl pin so I think that the crescent shaped shawl is a nice shape that you can do lots of things with and it's very easy to wear so thank you so much Liz for knitting the majority of this for me and I cast off and sewed all the ends in I just haven't got round to blocking it properly but I do think that this pattern actually doesn't need a lot of blocking because it's actually it sort of sits quite tidy and neat without blocking but I will block it because I think it just might bring that lace out just that little bit more um, I will pop a picture on the screen of what the pattern is supposed to look like and obviously you'll be able to see it a little bit better in those photographs in terms of the lacy pattern than it will show up on black on the camera which is a bit annoying to show you but I think that'll be something that's really really wearable with lots of different outfits. So in terms of the Make 9 for 2020, I have a few shawls on the list. So to start with, I have the Pure Joy shawl. And this is a really gorgeous crescent shaped shawl. And it's by Hohi Logatelli. I really love the asymmetric shape of this one. And in fact, I think this is one of my favourite patterns that I've knitted in terms of a shawl. I used two of my own colourways. This one is Tell It To My Heart and this one is Love Shack. And for this one and a couple of the other shawls that I'm going to show you, I did actually create some listings on my online shop for a shawl kit for these. But obviously you have to purchase the pattern separately from the designer. So that's the first one that I completed. Absolutely love this one. Definitely one of my favourite shawl patterns I've ever knitted really I absolutely love the crescent shape of it 
So the next one I've got to show you is the Jigshaw Puzzle by Stephen West. And this is knitted again in some of my hand dyed yarns. This one is really unusual in that it's absolutely massive, but it's also knitted. So you've got two four ply yarns double which means actually you can marl the two yarns together in each of the sections but I decided to keep mine separate because I wanted the colours to look quite distinct in each of the blocks and I added the hugest tassels you can ever imagine <laughs> because I thought well look how big it is it needs huge tassels doesn't it <laughs> but it's basically something that I wear more of as like a blanket around the house really because it is so big so I tend to wear it sort of like that and tend to cosy up really in front of the telly and keep nice and cosy with this one. It's got an I-cord finish around the edge, which I absolutely love. And it is a really fun knit because you're knitting different sections and you sort of think, ooh, what, which, which shape am I gonna knit next? So that was off my list. And I've got a third shawl as well off my Make Nine list. And this one was the Slumber Shawl, also by Stephen West. And this one, it's got a bit creased in my wardrobe actually, I sort of roll them up so you try and to avoid them getting creased but um, because this needed quite a bit of blocking the shape isn't quite so neat actually now I've sort of had it rolled up in the wardrobe. So this is a slumber shawl by Stephen West and it's knitted again, two hand dyed yarns dyed by me smells like teen spirit and this one's nothing gonna stop us now and this is a DK Merino actually so it's a heavier weight shawl than I'd normally knit but actually the pattern is knitted for an Aran weight but I didn't want anything as heavy as an Aran weight I think um, but I still find the DK is quite thick enough to be honest so that's another one off my make nine list I do like the shape of this though and I am quite tempted to sort of convert it to a four ply weight as well because I like the wiggly bits on the edge. So that is the third thing off my Make Nine list. The fourth thing on my Make Nine list was another shawl. So I went a bit shawl mad last year and the fact that I've already got 30 odd shawls in my wardrobe already just seems silly that I've knitted so many but I do enjoy knitting them and that's the main thing really isn't it. So this next one is the Right Around the Corner Shawl and this is a pattern by Lisa Haynes and this is the easiest pattern to knit and it is really satisfying. I think that the shape of this is really lovely to wear. I think it looks best sort of around the neck. This one I decided to do tiny, tiny little tassels on but I did have a second version where I did bigger tassels and I think that that looks a bit more balanced really but if you if you like little tassels these are perfect <laughs> but I really like the way the colours look around the neck when you've actually got it on. I think sometimes when you're choosing a shawl pattern you pick the pattern because you like it all stretched out looking lovely but I picked this because I saw it on the model in the picture and I I just thought actually I'm choosing the end result of how it's going to look like on rather than the actual pattern itself and it is such an easy knit to do if you haven't knitted a shawl before this is a perfect thing to start with I absolutely love it so again this is knitted in a couple of my hand dyed yarns it is here comes the rain again and you can't hurry love and I decided to do this in a shiny Stellina base let's see if you can see this the shiny Stellina in the yarn <laughs> probably not because it doesn't pick up very well on camera but it is very very sparkly which I think sometimes all you need is a bit of sparkle so there we are that's my fourth shawl from my make nine list of 2020 and that is all the shawls, thankfully. <laughs> but I do have a number of other things. So first of all, I have a little Christmas ornament that I knitted. This is the, I, now, this is me trying to pronounce something. Stjana? Stjan <laughs> I'm really sorry about my awful pronunciation. Um, but I'll put it on the screen and in the description bar down below as well. So it's a really cute little star shape. The original pattern is by Carolina Eckerdale and it is knitted in a DK weight yarn normally but I did mine in four ply just because I wanted it to be nice and small and I used 2.5 millimetre needles. It is a little bit tricky to get started but once you've got it started it's quite an easy knit. 
let's see if we can get a little bit closer there I knitted it in my Thriller colourway on my BFL base and the BFL base has got quite a matte look to it so it um, does change the, the look of the colourway I think I wish I'd done it in Stellina because you cannot get enough Stellina at Christmas time <laughs> so that's one of my Make 9 as well the next on my list is the Fraxinus Cowl and this is a pattern by Isolde Teague and I just loved the cable on this. It's absolutely gorgeous. Look at that texture. Really, really beautiful. And the colour obviously isn't coming out properly. That's, that's probably a more accurate um, version of the colour there. But it's a nice, simple sort of shape cowl but with those lovely cable details. And this yarn by Richard Devres, and it's a Canadian dyed yarn, and it's the She's Here colourway. And I just thought that just goes so nicely with this pattern. And it's something, I haven't actually worn this very much really. Partly because we haven't left the house much this year. <laughs> um, but I think that this is a lovely colour to go with a lot of my clothes actually. There we go, so that is another one of my Make 9 finished. And I just love this colour, I absolutely. It looks like it's it's basically Barbara's colour really, isn't it? <laughs> so there we are. I have one more thing that I finished from my Make 9 list for last year. And this is the Gwanwin sweater, which I converted into a cardigan. If I put this on, it'll be easier to show you, I think. So this is in a DK Merino yarn, out of my own hand eyed again. I've gone a bit mad with nicking all my yarn out of the um off the shelf really haven't I <laughs> so this is a sweater pattern normally and I actually steaked it into a cardigan because I, I will definitely wear it more if I have a cardigan because I tend to get a little bit hot if I can't sort of um open it out and let a bit of air in because I get a bit hot and I definitely do wear it more I also did three quarter length sleeve because I don't like having to roll my sleeves up I don't like having two longer sleeves even if it's a nice warm cardigan so let me give you a bit of a twirl it's got some gorgeous cable and lace detail across the top and then all across the back as well um, and this is the purple haze colourway on my merino DK weight all right, I'm going to take this off because we've got the heating on full blast today, so it's a little bit warm for in the house. <laughs> so, I had two more things on my Make 9 list, which I didn't complete, but I have good reason for this. So, the other thing that I had on my list was the Branches and Buds sweater by Carrie Brostick Hogue, and... Um, I basically decided not to knit this garment because it's quite a thick garment and I just I thought I've got enough thick cardigans now I probably wouldn't wear it so I decided to sort of scrap that idea and do the Stephen West mystery knit along instead which I showed you a couple of weeks ago finished so that was off my list and I also had the Lenore cardigan by Lisa Much now I decided against knitting that in the end because I looked at the sizes and it wasn't very size inclusive so I didn't want to purchase the pattern as out of principle really because I wanted to see people expand their sizes to be more size inclusive to different shapes and sizes of body so I, I sort of struck that off my list and I've rethought my ideas for 2021 so I'm going to go through my targets for this year in terms of knitting and I'm going to pop pictures on the screen of what they look like in the pattern so that you get an idea of the range of things that I want to knit. I have really enjoyed making this list of things and I think I've made some thoughtful decisions on what I'd like to make for this year based on sort of styles that suit me, things that will suit other garments that I've already got and just things that I want to knit for fun and to challenge myself a bit really. So first of all I want to knit the Wishes cardigan by Hohi Locatelli. So I really like sort of drapey cardigans and this was the sort of closest thing that I could find on Ravelry to any of those things that I've sort of um, got in my wardrobe already that I'd like to sort of have more of. So, the Wishes cardigan. I think I fancy doing it in a sort of grey turquoisey colour. 
I'm going to sort of make it up and dye it myself I think um, but I haven't quite decided on the base of yarn I'm going to use yet but it is a four ply pattern so that's number one so number two is the Mary Margaret's Lace Tam and this is a pattern by Mary Elizabeth and I had this on my make nine two years ago and I did actually have the yarn for it but I didn't get round to it I don't know what was going on and I think well I guess I purchased the yarn especially for the project I should really have that on my make nine list so that I actually tick it off this year <laughs> so that's going number two they're not really a proper order they're just sort of random really but there we go third on my list is the Mayfield mitts and this pattern is by Erica Hooser and I just love this colour work so I really like doing colour work but I find a lot of the patterns that I'm attracted to actually when I think about it I don't think that really either suits my body shape because a lot of it is the colour work around the neck um, and I just one I don't really like jumpers that much I like to wear cardigans instead and also I'm not that keen on things being really high up I'd rather wear something that's sort of a um, v-neck or something like that but I thought I want to do a colour work project this year so I'll put one on my make nine and I saw these mittens and I just thought they are gorgeous and they'll just fit in with the rest of my wardrobe really well so the Mayfield mitts and going on from where I said that I think that actually v-neck cardigans suit me a lot more I was trawling Ravelry looking for a really nice v-neck cardigan that's done in four ply yarn and I found this really beautiful pattern by Hohi Locatelli again and it's called the sparkle cardigan now I'm planning it on some cardigans that go with some dresses that I've made I've made quite a few dresses in the last 12 months so I wanted some cardigans to go with them and I think that this pattern but if I make a cropped version so it cuts off at the waist and I think that that'll be nice and flattering with a dress I wouldn't necessarily wear a cropped cardigan with jeans or anything but with a dress I think that'll go really nicely and I was thinking either three quarter length sleeves or or slightly shorter elbow length sleeves for that one so a little bit of modification from the original pattern but it's a really nice neckline and I like the little lace detail across the cardigan as well so next I have some socks because you have to have socks on your make nine list don't you even though I've got something like 40 pairs of my own and Adam has about 40 pairs as well but you can never have too many socks basically <laughs> these are the French meringue socks by Marianne Heikinen and I actually had this one on my make nine list a couple of years ago as well but I've popped it back on there because I just think that that cable detail is absolutely gorgeous so that's on my list and I thought I want to have a variety of things on my make nine list so I don't always just knit shawls and socks so I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to vary it a little bit so I've picked a cowl pattern and this is the every bit cowl by Stephanie Lotvin and this is a DK cowl and I just thought it was a really lovely shape with it being quite narrow at the back but all full at the front so nice and easy to wear but almost like a shawl at the same time because obviously <laughs> I've got a shawl addiction so next I have the v-back tea by Jamie Hoffman and I, I literally saw this and I thought yes I definitely want to knit that the minute I saw it so the original pattern is supposed to be round neck at the front and v-neck at the back but as I was saying I do love a v-neck so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make it and wear it so that the v-neck is at the front uh, I think that'll look really flattering with my figure we shall see <laughs> it calls for sort of three I think it's three skeins of yarn but basically you can use four ply that you've got in your stash to have a, like a faded effect so I wanted to have um, an ornament on my make nine list as well and I've chosen the acorn by Kim Hamlin and I just thought that this was so cute and I'm also trying to increase my the number of autumnal decorations that I've got around the house so I think that'll be a lovely little addition to my little display around the fireplace with my pumpkins and my little crocheted autumnal leaves that I made this year or last year I should say so that's on the list and last of all so for the last few years, every year I've been doing the Mystery Knit Along by Stephen West that he does in the sort of autumn time. And I think, well, why don't I put it on my Make Nine list? Because it's something I enjoy every year and the mystery of it is just so exciting. And Stephen does the most 
interesting design so I'm definitely going to do that again this year and I thought put it on my make nine and also I can make sure I can tick something off then rather than have things that I haven't completed so those are the nine things that I have on my list for this year so next I have my sewing section and I've just done one simple thing this week Adam asked me if I'd make a bag ta -da, for his VR headset so he of course picked Star Trek fabric and it's just basically a box shape that's got two zips around the side and it's a bit awkward to shut it when I've only got <laughs> two hands but basically because I didn't have a zip that was long enough I basically put one this side and one that side and they close in the center so it's got some Star Trek fabric on the outside and then just plain black on the inside and you can see his headsets in there hopefully I don't drop it it'll go mad won't he <laughs> so it's his VR headset where he goes and plays games on his computer and um, it just needs somewhere to keep it nice and safe and cushioned I basically used some of the wadding that I tend to, to use for my normal bags and did a nice square shape Ta -da! So he's very pleased that he's got somewhere nice and neat to keep his headset now and I made it a custom size to fit in one of the drawers in our coffee table so that it'll pack away nice and neatly so it doesn't leave boxes untidy in the rest of the living room but don't tell Adam that I've made it for him special <laughs> so there we go that's that bag finished so that's my sewing that I've been doing and I have cross stitch next and I have a finished cross stitch Ta -da! <laughs> I am so pleased to have finished this it has been a long time coming really really pleased and I have I haven't actually pressed it yet but so a lot of the creases came out just laying it flat I think which is always good I'll give it a little press delicately on some towels and then I'm going to mount it in a lovely frame so I'm going to order some really nice anti-glare museum glass so that it protects it nicely so normally I don't actually use um, glass in a frame with cross stitch but because this has taken me so so long I'm definitely going to put glass in this one but there we go so this is a pattern that I picked up from a charity shop which was so so lucky it was a sampler from Moira Blackburn and this is what the front looked like so it does look quite similar <laughs> so I did make some changes because obviously it's the year 2020 so I modified that bit a little bit and here my initials were longer than just the MB that Moira Blackburn, that's that's the designer, had in the bottom so I ended up omitting the bottom part of this flower so that I could fit it in but I like the fact that it's personalised um, so it's not quite the same as the original but I'm pretty pleased with how it turned out Ta-da! <laughs> It is cross stitch on 18 count Ada and it just came with a kit so I, I don't know what the colour of the Ada is or anything but it's sort of an open oatmeal-y colour. So the next thing I want to do is a snowy themed cross stitch and this is how the pattern looks. I will see if I can pop a better picture on the screen as well because I noticed that the print out here doesn't really do it justice but I picked this up from a shop called Peak District Needleworks I think it's called. I'll pop a link in the description bar down below because they had a wonderful customer service so it was just the pattern that I got as it didn't come as a proper kit but I have picked up the threads um, from that shop and one another shop because they didn't have any of the like a gold colour but I've managed to get hold of all the threads that are called for in this pattern ready to do it I do have some lovely linen to start stitching on so I'll show you that next week but you can see that I have a cross stitch in mind so that's all my cross stitch and now I have some confessions right this is all Joe's fault. <laughs> My friend Joe texted me on Christmas Day to tell me there was a sale at Rainbow Fabrics. And obviously it would be rude not to purchase some fabrics if they were having 40% off. 40? <laughs> 
so I purchased a few. Now, I have washed these, so they're just sort of, they're in a huge pile straight off the washing line, basically. So this is the one that drew me first. It's like a pink, corally pinky floral fabric, which I thought, because it's quite a small print, be just so good for lots of different projects. <laughs> I picked up four meters of this because I know that the Eve dress from Sew Over It takes three and a half meters. And I thought, well, well, you can only buy in meter increments anyway on rainbow fabrics. So I thought if I get four meters, I've got plenty to do the Eve dress if I want to, because I did think, because this is a viscose drapey fabric, I have plenty to do the Eve dress, but there are a number of other patterns that are a little bit similar, but different in some aspects that I could also choose. And if I did choose something that was a little bit less fabric hungry, I could also make a blouse out of it. So that's the first one, really pretty pinks on a black background and I basically did fold these up but when they're four meters long they're difficult to control <laughs> the second one is like a tiny little squares on a black background and I just thought oh that's just so useful it's just a staple fabric that I needed in my stash <laughs> And again, I got four metres on the basis that the Eve dress takes three and a half. So plenty of fabric to do either the Eve dress or a less fabric hungry dress and a blouse. So there we go. That's fabric number two. I was, I was thinking very sensible thoughts here. Buy things that are very sort of, you can mix them with other things and very versatile and I got a black with a white spot so this is very similar to the one with the squares on but it is dot instead and I just thought that was really pretty so that's four meters as well there there are a number of dresses that I could possibly choose but I haven't quite decided yet but at least I know I have plenty of fabric <laughs> which is the most important thing those two I just showed you were sort of a crepey texture to the viscose. Um, this one here is actually the same print as the first one I showed you, but in a red colourway. But I thought I can't leave this and not buy the two colourways. I thought red is always good for a dress. And because it's got a dark background as well, I could also wear it in the winter with some tights underneath. So, ta-da! Very useful fabrics, I'd say. <laughs> oh dear. Anyway, <laughs> I may have been on the Rainbow Fabrics website yesterday and ordered some more because it was a bargain and there was things that I needed. <laughs> there is things to do with my make nine as well, so it's not it's not like I don't know what I'm making with each of these things. <laughs> it's still naughty anyway right shop update at the end of the podcast so there's nothing new going in the shop this week but I just wanted to say thank you ever so much for the people that purchased the yarn clubs on um, last week's shop update they went down an absolute storm they I did say that I'd ship them all by Friday the 8th of January but because I sold so many I think some of them might be shipping on Monday the 11th or Tuesday the 12th of January but they won't be any later than that I just wanted to know you there might be a bit of delay on the dispatch there I think next time I'll just give myself a couple more days um, before I plan on dispatching them just so that I've got plenty of time to do the other orders as well but thank you so much for watching don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more and I shall see you in the next episode bye